All right, I had another question uh, from students about this problem from the section 6.4 homework. Um, so I'll go through uh, how to solve it. And, um, and uh, yeah, this one's going to be specific to one of your uh, to one of your homework assignments. This I think this value is going to change randomly, but I believe everything else is going to remain the same. And um, it says to round to one decimal place. I'm going to give it to you in, in exact form, uh, but they're expecting that this would be um, this would be in uh, in decimal form. So you'll be using a calculator to do this. Um, and that's okay uh, on tests and things like that. I would just ask you for the exact form. Okay. Um, so when we get to that point, I'll make a point to say, at this point, use a calculator to find this, and you would put in that value at, at the tenths place. Okay? All right, so find every angle between 0 and 180, satisfying the given equation. Round your ans answers to one decimal place, so to the tenths, and enter them as a comma separated list. Cosine of 7 ninths. Cosine of an angle is 7 ninths. Okay, so first, I'm drawing a unit circle because we're only looking for angles up here in the top half. That's 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, that's the first thing to notice. So we're not going to look for angles down here. Um, Next thing to note is that we have the cosine defined, which means we know information about the radius of our circle, which is 9. And we have information about the adjacent side length, which is 7. So this would be 7. So if we define our angle like this, cosine of this angle is in fact 7 ninths. Okay. So what is that angle? Well, here we go. I, I don't think this is this takes too much work right here. Um, it's this. We've got a ratio. We want to know the angle. We know that cosine takes us from some angle to a ratio. And we know that there's a function that goes backwards. That's the cosine inverse. So what happens if you take, on a calculator, the cosine inverse of 7 ninths? Well, that's going to give you exactly theta. Okay. But it's it's only going to give you one angle. It's not going to give you a big set of angles. Okay? So, what might it also give you? Or what other angles might work? Um, well, what other triangles have this exact same ratio, 7 over 9? We also have this triangle here, which is 7 to the right, 9, excuse me, 9 here, and this is our angle theta now. So this still gives us the same cosine, cosine of this angle down here, which maybe I'll call phi. Uh, cosine of phi is still 7 ninths, right? What if I were to go over here, like make another triangle that's the same height? Well, if I do that, then this is no longer 7 ninths, this is negative 7 ninths. So that won't work. So what two angles do we have? We have these two. We have the angle here, and we have negative cosine inverse of 7 ninths. Because that's phi. 
how do I get down to this angle? Well, I, I go to this, I go right seven, and then I go down the same height of this one, right? But that angle is the exact same as this one in size, except it's instead of going anti-clockwise, we're going clockwise to get to that angle. So these are, these are two angles that can give you this value. If I go around the circle an entire another time, I can get to another angle that has the same cosine ratio. But what, what's true about that and what's true also about this triangle down here is that those angles are not between 0 and 180. So what angles are they it's, that give you cosine of 7 ninths? It's only this one. So what do you plug in on, on WebAssign? You would plug this into a calculator, round it to one decimal place, and that's it. You could also throw a negative sign in front of it and plug it in. But again, that angle is going to be outside of 0 to 180, so, so you don't plug that one in. OK, so it's just one angle. Um, I hope that helps, and I'll, uh, I'll see you for the next one.